Welcome to another live patching session. This is Giovanni here at Fraptools for another improvisation based on three random techniques that I will pick from our website. What you just heard is the result of this improvisation. So it is what I will come up with by the end of this video. You can get three random techniques as well from our techniques page, just in case you need any kickstart for your creativity. So today's three random techniques are Falistri Sync, the kick drum number one, and the side chain number one. Some of them I already used, but I think that Falistri Sync is a new entry in this kind of videos. So I am honestly rather disappointed by these three techniques because they are surprisingly uh, fitting to one another. So we have the kick drum and we have the side chain. I couldn't have asked for anything better. And then we have the Falistri Sync that can be, for instance, a bass line. Mm, so I was saying I'm rather disappointed because I was getting used to having techniques that uh, didn't fit well and oftentimes in these circumstances I often ended up with the most satisfying patches to put up. But I think that the fact that this uh, session seems easy doesn't mean that it will be. So uh, the kick drum number one is a technique that uses, uh, some of you may already be familiar with that, it uses falistri, one falistri to generate a kick drum. We use the yellow generator as an envelope to control its pitch and amplitude, and the other one to provide the tone of our kick drum. The other one is, always, uh, is still on falistri and uh, uses both generators. Ah, this is the, the, the first this is the first issue that we may need to overcome because we will need both Falistri to generate our sound and we may end up with no envelope whatsoever to control the articulation. So let's start. And then we have the side chain number one, which is fairly easy. It uses this uh, to duck the, it uses the integrator combined with the three to one to duck the bass line according to the kick drum. Anyway, let's start with uh, Falistri's uh, kick drum, easy peasy, set the green generator to loop, time scale to short, and patch the four quadrant multiplier output to a CGM channel. Forgot to plug my phone here, okay. Oh, we may also need the reverb. There we go. So, as you can see, we have the yellow envelope. We are going to set it to transient, time scale to long, and then we will play with the uh, with the shape. But now it will control the amplitude of our green generator. Don't be afraid to saturate the CGM and don't be afraid to use a low tone because now we're going to patch the attenuated output to its volt per octave input and this is what will happen. Now, of course, this is not a kick drum, but if we play with the right times and the right attenuation, we may end up with the... reasonable kick drum. So this was the first technique. Uh, the side chain uh, basically uh, picks. So as you can see, we have the, this is the old panel, but the, the, the graphic, the, the meaning is the same. So we have this output here, semi-normal to this input here of the slew limiter. So we are gonna use this envelope, we're gonna Keep this, um, we're gonna keep this semi-normalization and use this to integrate the envelope duration to provide a side chain. So we're gonna patch this to our 3 to one We're gonna invert it and add a positive offset. Oh, look, it is already there. So whenever we hit 
the so we're gonna play with the decay and whenever we hit this envelope we're gonna have a negative envelope here which we will use to duck our melodic line now Falister sync basically tries to emulate the flip sync that we have on the brain so and uh, there is one major difference which is that on the brain so the flip sync so we shot a video on the flip sync so i will link to that uh, up here and down here in the description but to sum up Brenzo's flip sync is uh, where one oscillator forces the other oscillator to invert its direction and on Falistri, uh, because this is primarily thought of as an envelope or a LFO or a um, function generator, you name it, um, it always recalls the rising stage. So if the waveform is already uh, rising, it will not invert it. It will invert it only if it is falling. Unless we're, we, will, we, we set the green generator to reset on rest, but let not, let's not dive too much into that. Anyway, we need to set both oscillators to loop and their time scale to short so that we will have two oscillators. And we can patch them both to our CGM, like this, and this. So I set the CGM channel to crossfade mode, the stereo channel, so that this will be a sort of dual mono sum. They are, now they are free running, they are completely out of tune. Now, the technique basically takes either of these outputs and patches it here. And lo and behold... Now, every cycle of um, these uh, oscillator here will force this to reset or will force it to the raising stage, so it's not completely a reset, but it is still a... Uh, it is still a um, plausible flip sync, which we call Falister sync because it's not technically flip sync. Anyway, so we have a lot of Falistry, we're not paying any attention to the Brenso, and uh, I think that now we need a sequence, so I might speed up the following part where I come up with a sequence. But the cool thing is that now we are going to patch Ustas. Uh, so I'm going to set up a new project. New, initialize a new project, yes. And then I'm going to patch this here, so that I will duplicate the Volper Octave signal. And uh, I will patch one copy to my master oscillator, to my primary oscillator, to my leader, leading oscillator, to its volt per octave input. So now I can control it. And usually it's, it is nice also to uh, control the other one, because if this goes faster than this, the, the whole point of uh, syncing two oscillators uh, kind of kinda gets missed. So. I can patch this to both the volt per octave sync inputs. Now, I'm gonna try to come up with a sequence. Okay, so this is our sequence. I felt pretty lazy today, so I relied on Usta's uh, quantization settings. So I set my pentatonic minor scale and I played with the variation index and the variation range for the last six stages of my sequence. So the first part is gonna be always the same and the last one is always gonna be uh, different at every iteration of this sequence. Now, cool thing, if we run now you can hear that if I remove the volt per octave jack from the synced oscillator, it's gonna be very, very boring. So 
My suggestion here, which you can find also on the technique on our uh, website that I linked it here in the description, is to route the second volt per octave through the second Falistri's slew limiter and then patch it back here. Now, if we play with this, we add some slew limiter, which is technically the same as we do with Brazos Integrator, with the only difference that in this case we can control the rising and the falling stage independently, which I think is very, very groovy. with the wave shape. We can bring a sharper sound. Blend it with the bass. And why not we just saturate the whole channel? And then we can even add some reverb, for instance. We have the side chain technique to perform. So, and we have to add to, and we must add a bass line to this. So, I already set my sequence to work with an external clock, so that I am I can easily change the tempo. But I also uh, made sure to set all the tracks to work with the ex external clock and all the tracks set to the same uh, resolution. So I can use another track which is running a plain 16-note pattern to program a gate track that I will use to trick my, to trig my kick drum. For instance, we can set... Let's start with a classic four on the floor and see where it leads us. So I'm gonna patch my track one here. This is my kick drum. Seems like an arcade game, so try, let's try to slow it down. And now we had the side chain. You can see that this is pumping in sync with the the kick drum and then we're gonna patch it to our bass line like this now we must make sure to add a positive offset so that the kick drum will subtract energy from the highest possible level we can attenuate the The, the, the envelope and uh, this is like uh, the threshold parameter and this is like the release parameter sort of so we can have a more dramatic side chaining
then we can play with different kick patterns. And I think that this track now lacks a little bit of uh, hi-hats. And I can program a different track on our CVB. Or, well, actually, you know what? We have our brain so here. You see the point? See, this is the exact issue that I was mentioning at the beginning of this video. It looked way too easy. We have two Falistris and they are already doing something. We have no envelope, no spare envelope whatsoever. So I cannot create any kind of uh, uh, any kind of um, hi hat or this kind of things. I also have one spare channel here. But you know what? Well, we can try to cope with that. So I can try to patch my uh... So I have two options. I'll show you them both. So the first one, patch blue noise. Let's say that we want to add some, some, some Hyatt. We can patch it straight to our yellow return. And then we have a VCA, but we don't have an envelope. So we're gonna use straight gates. So we're gonna pass CVB to our yellow. This is very extreme, so. <laughs> Works. And then we can play with some ratchets. Option number one. Option number two. This is even more sacrilegious. We can patch it through a brain source. VCA, this is making me laugh because we are using basically brain source as a VCA, but <laughs> you can. So nothing is gonna stop you. So you can patch this to the timber modulation bus. Then you we can patch our timber modulation bus to our uh, uh, second channel of this channel here, parallel with the kick, so we're gonna have a dry channel for percussion, and then we're gonna patch uh, it. Uh, uh, we're gonna set it to crossfade and play with the balance as we as we like. And then we're gonna patch the gate here, so we're gonna use the Tiber Mod VCA as a linear uh, as a linear VCA, independent from the brain. So. Here we define the balance. And I think that we can try to saturate the group like we did in the previous video. I'm going to play with this. Uh, I'm gonna add some variation to the first note as well. Okay, so it was tough to come to the end, but I'm pretty satisfied with the result, and I hope that. This technique teaches you how not to be scared of any VCA that hangs around your system and don't be shy if you want to use your brain just as a linear VCA. I hope you had a good time and if you want to share the video, if you want to share another video with your approach towards this technique, uh, feel free to do so. Use the Frap Ideas hashtag so we can keep track of your ideas. And I hope you had fun and I will see you next time.